been up for a while, have I? Mm. I said to Polly, remember I said, would you rather be buried or cremated? And she said, neither, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Mm. Fair enough too. She was a fighter and uh, she would be stroppy when it was needed. And uh, so we think, and still I rise is an appropriate kind of message for our beloved daughter. Mm. <laughs> Everything has shrunk and I think they cut the top story off. Yes, the darling Polly, the middle of our three children who mm. was very gentle and introverted and a sheer delight of a child. She was the quintessential quiet middle mm. child in the family and I confess that there were times when we're driving somewhere and we put Polly in the middle of the back seat to keep the other two from arguing with each other because <laughs> you, you knew there wasn't going to be any arguing with her. She started going off the rail. She was self-harming and we just thought, you know, it's probably adolescence. And then one night she didn't come home till late. And I said to her, oh, Polly, anything could have happened to you, you know, um, you could have been raped. And she said, no, oh, it's a bit late for that. You know, I said, what do you mean? She said, no, oh, I was raped two years ago. So that was like a bullet through the heart. You know, it was very, uh, and, uh, so the next day I told Rosemary and she kind of fell to her knees and couldn't even stand upright. I had to support her, you know, it was... Um, it's just the worst yeah. possible thing uh, yeah. to hear that, that... And that it happened when she was only 11 too, I think. I think that's, yeah. that's just... Yeah. And then there was a whole life, that other side of her life where uh, she was always getting herself into strange fixes, living on the streets, and I had to go and mm. pick her up at times. And then she got into prostitution to pay mm. for a mm. drug habit. And um, and her best friend then killed herself at 16. And, um, so I had to take Polly around to the house, and we had to get her rescued from a gang headquarters at one stage. I gave her mouth to mouth on the floor after Rosemary found her an overdose. Um, for all the depths that, that she went to, for all the dark nights she mm -hmm. went through, uh, you know, we were always, we were always mum and dad and she always loved us. Yeah, I used to ring her pretty much every day and have mm -hmm. a talk and you could always tell by her voice whether she'd been using or, you know, what was going on in her life. And other times she'd be innocent and exuberant and uh, mm. full of fun. So, mm. yeah, so we, yeah, we just went with the journey, really. Mm. And I do wonder how different her life would have been but for the sexual abuse at mm. the age of 11. I And I... I'm horrified by not only it happening to her, but to so many people. It, it's a scourge in our society. It seems to me to be something that, um, that happens to so many people and leaves so many people wounded uh, in their souls, trying to recover from that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it gets inside the soul of a person and it's such a violation, it's more than a physical injury, it's a, you know, an assault against the very essence of a person. And for Polly, um, that ended up being exacerbated by being raped later on in life. And you might have thought that that adult rape, because it was dealt with so differently, yeah. because the outcome was so different, yeah. uh, that it, it might have somehow made her stronger because she went to the police and uh, there were five other victims. He pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 12 and a half years in prison. Mm. And I thought, 
the strength that she had to, to go through that was extraordinary. And I thought, this is, this is perhaps going to help her. And we, we were so wrong. It was an absolute disaster for her. I think there's a better way of conducting those deeply personal sexual offending cases of child abuse, of rape, of sexual offending. And that way, in my view, is through an inquisitorial approach where the judge is collecting the information instead of the lawyers being able to uh, have a go uh, at, um, at the witnesses. But I just don't think that works. And, and, and it results in very low conviction rates too. And that's, that's kind of suffering it all over again, isn't it? If it has happened to a woman and she's not believed. She thought that it would be empowering, she said, a chance to close the chapter on this whole ordeal. Instead, it unravelled me. I felt victim blamed, slut shamed, and for this to happen in front of three male judges was excruciatingly difficult, knowing we had no right of reply. Here was my Polly uh, just listening to an appeal, saying that that was worse than the actual rape, and that hollowed me out in new ways, I think. She always wanted to go back to Switzerland where she'd grow up as a child. And we made a sort of pact with her about 18 months before her 40th birthday and said, for every dollar you put aside, we can subsidise that with a dollar. And Gradually, she stuck to that and we got enough for her fare across to Switzerland and she went and met her brother there. We just phoned Mum and Dad and apparently, this is it. Yep. Where the geraniums are, can you see? That was our house, there. But Matt and I think it used to be biggie. <laughs> and there was that, that childlike uh, attitude to life stayed with her always. Here is where we live. Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a magic time. Mm. She rang us from the hotel one day and said it's like being a princess in a castle. You know, she was mm. so happy. She came back mm. uh, from Switzerland with plans to move to the Ida Valley like we had planned. Mm. Mm. We were going to build a house next door to the house we'd bought. And uh, I think she, she had a lot she had a lot going for her and she was a lot calmer. Yeah, she mm. was so full of hope. I am in no doubt, and Mike is in no doubt, that she loved us with a, a depth of love that, that we were really blessed yeah. to uh, have been the recipients of that. Which, yeah. in some ways, made it harder. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because when she did die, we knew that uh, she talked to Mike, she was coming back to the valley, and I suppose that was some kind of relief that we knew it wasn't a suicide. So at the moment it's a suspected drug overdose, but, um, mm. but the reality is that she's gone. There's only two ways that it goes after that. You, you either split up and divorce or else you get closer together. And it's a bit of a gamble, I think, as to which happens. Mm. But for us, it made us stronger, didn't mm, it? I it think did. we yeah. were more committed to each other and thought we can get through this if we do it together. Mm. And, uh, mm. Hi! Oh, how are you? Oh, your face is a bit cold. This is... Um, Polly's fingerprint. She's around my neck every well, day, um, and it's great because I can kind of um, just know that she's close to me um, all the time. Anytime somebody at a young age uh, has a crisis like rape, um, they haven't got the resources um, really to 
know how to deal with it. They're not old enough, they haven't had enough life experience, and so it becomes even more damaging than it might be otherwise. And it was certainly so for Polly, though I'm not being able to talk about it even for a couple of years, I think, and uh, trying to cope with it on her own. No, she hadn't told anybody.